Hey guys, George here from Soundtracks. Now last week we talked about using the momentum in our Tsunami 2s and we added in the brake features. We talked about the independent and the automatic. Today we're going to talk about the dynamic brake. Now in the real world, on the real locomotives, dynamic braking is done by taking the electric motors that are on the axles and turning them into electrical generators. And it's that electromechanical resistance that slows the train down and keeps it under control. Now, as, the low, as those generators are creating electricity, that energy has to be dissipated somewhere. And traditionally, you're gonna see on the top of a locomotive here, you're gonna see a couple of fans and you're gonna see some uh, openings, vents. And what this is, is underneath the here, there's a resistor grid that that energy is sent to. And the sounds that you actually hear of the dynamic brake or of the fans blowing air across those resistors to keep them cool and keep them from overheating or causing a fire. So in our Tsunami 2, doing the dynamic brake, you're actually going to press the F4 and it's actually going to trigger the sounds of the fans to kick on and you're going to hear that sound. Now, going one step farther in CB114, you can set up the dynamic brake to affect the prime mover to match your prototype. For example, traditionally EMD, when the dynamic brakes were applied, would drop the prime mover to idle. The reason is, is there's no sense using all the extra fuel if you're riding the brakes downhill. Same reason you don't push the gas pedal when you're going downhill. You kind of ease up off and let maintain speed. The same thing with the EMD. Now, other railroads uh, prototypes such as Alco would typically notch up to notch eight in addition with GE. And the idea was that the fan was mechanically driven by the crankshaft and therefore kept the most amount of air running across the resistor grid. And so therefore those locomotives would typically notch up to notch eight. And there were some railroads out there uh, the Southern Pacific most notably and the railroad that I model on the few dynamic brake equipped locomotives that they had uh, the Missouri Pacific actually would run the prime movers to notch four and the idea was to make sure that the main generator was generating enough electrical energy to keep the traction motor blowers running to keep the traction motors cool as well again you don't want to overheat the equipment so with our Tsunami 2 we can take our locomotive we'll run him here and just kind of show you how the dynamic brakes work so we're going to move him at about speed step 15. We're going to apply the F4 dynamic brakes and you're going to hear how the dynamic brakes come on and you're going to hear how it affects the prime mover. So we'll get him moving. We'll hit the F4. And you hear the fans kick on and you're going to hear that prime mover drop. So now that you've applied the regular dynamic brakes, now in the real world there's actually different stages of dynamic brakes. So you have low, medium, high, and so forth. Well in the Tsunami 2 and in a help effort to give you that realism but also keep it easy for us operators who've never run a real locomotive, we actually have two stages. You have the dynamic brake low like you just heard and then if you press the F4 again you're going to go into dynamic braking high. And dynamic braking high on the Tsunami 2 will actually implement a third braking rate. The idea is to keep the locomotive controlled under a certain speed around 7 to 10 miles an hour in the real world because dynamic brakes won't actually stop the train. It'll just kind of help keep it under control. So with that, in CV116 is our braking rate set for the dynamic brakes. Now, because of our limited track space, I've got this set relatively high so you're going to see the effect take place pretty quickly. But on my typical locomotives, I had, tend to have the braking rate a lot slower, so that way it takes a lot longer for the braking rate to take effect. But again, we're showing you the effect here, and, it just, and it's adjustable to your personal tastes. So let's move this locomotive forward at about speed step 20. We're going to press the F4 key once, and you're going to see the dynamic brake low, and you're going to see how it affects the prime mover. And then the second time, we're going to press F4 again to go into dynamic braking high, and then you'll hear the fans kick on and a little bit more intense and you're also going to see the braking rate take effect. So let's do this. So we're going to press the F4 key. And you can hear that prime mover drop. Now we're going to press it a second time. And you kind of see how the locomotive slowed and you heard the fans kick on. Now once the locomotive is set at about 7 to 10 miles an hour, you'll hear the fans drop back down again. And then we just press it again a third time to exit out. 
and then a fourth time to get back to normal. And the locomotive then continues back on to the commanded speed step, which we've never touched. So now that you've seen how to use the F4 dynamic braking in the Tsunami 2, you can add this into your operating session. Now again, I recommend playing with the CV values to determine what you like and what's best for you and your operators. For more information, go to the Soundtracks user's guide at soundtracks.com manuals, or give us a call and we'll ha be happy to help, uh, help you set up any of these features that we've talked about. Now these are available in all of the Tsunami 2 decoders that have been shipping now. And so you've already got them. So try it out and play with it and see how you like it.